Happy Thursday, coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Technically, it's not live when you're watching it, but I'm here for a conference. Actually, I have some information from that conference to share, and I actually get to speak at it tomorrow. Super pumped. It's a big deal. I'm honored, humbled, and just really excited. So before we get into uh, the normal stuff, mortgage and other fun stuff, let's take a second for a quick history lesson. Uh, this day in history, you know, we'll say that... Uh, June 6th is missing on there. But for those that don't know, and if I were home with my girls right now, tonight, I'd be giving them a little history lesson and maybe find a documentary like this. Just remember D-Day, guys. Uh, Beaches of Normandy, all that. I mean, you guys, if you know the history, obviously. I don't need to tell you what it is, but let's just take a minute to remember those men and women that, that help fight, serve, and all that fun stuff. So moving on to the less important things in life <laughs> on the mortgage rates, guys. They are coming down a little by little. We're getting there. They're still showing just a touch above 7%. And for the mortgage rates themselves, it's been a good week. Um, a lot of that run, like we said, started last week. I wasn't sure if we'd break above all these barriers. And we've had a really good run. So that pleases me. It should please you if you're in the market to buy a home. I think uh, we can continue to see that rally in the next coming months. Just again, little by little. We're not talking big strides. But here's good news. The European, the ECB, European Central Bank, they did cut yesterday for the first time in almost five years, right around five years. And why is that important? These kind of things are typically done as a coordinated effort, which means the U.S. could be somewhat near a rate cut in the near future. That's what everybody's thinking uh, could happen. So good for them. Tomorrow is a big deal in terms of reports. Um, the job reports is coming out tomorrow. So we'll see what happens in the mortgage demand. The reason why I brought this is it's going to tie into some other stuff here in a minute. Uh, but the uh, thought and belief is that maybe the job reports will come in a little weaker than expected. Uh, you can see this chart here. It just shows the job growth. As, is, as you can see, it's been lesser and lesser and lesser for job growth. And the employment's moved relatively sideways. But at some point, guys, when these job growth stops happening, people will lose jobs. And uh, that's when the Fed's going to be able to actually take some action and cut rates. So we'll see what happens in tomorrow's numbers. We'll report on that next week. The housing piece I mentioned. So then the previous says housing's you know slowing, if you will. Uh, I don't know what to make of this chart, if I'm being completely honest. I mean, I get it, but I don't get it. I don't feel it right now uh, on the mortgage side. But apparently, pending home sales, um, you know, plunges <laughs> per this article. It's kind of been this way for the last year or two. I mean, yeah, according to COVID, it plunged, but uh, really and truly, there's there's just not as many pending home seal sales right now in April, which is interesting. And it's at a four-year low, but that four years makes sense. It's been COVID. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is the active housing inventory, meaning more homes, 42% is the one-year change from last year to now in Texas, 42% increase in homes that are for sale. That's a good thing. All right, we've been saying all this time, there's a housing shortage, housing shortage. People don't want to move because they don't want to get rid of their 3%. Well, the good news is more and more houses coming on uh, online and becoming available to purchase means that those buyers who have been looking or want to buy can do that, especially as rates start coming down little by little. I think Florida, 70%, Arizona, 68%. Yeah, those are those are higher than what I think they probably want. Uh, but the reality is, as a whole, uh, you can see that we're all overall in good shape. But Nevada, look, look at that, negative 25%. Um, I guess if I go outside, I can't find a home for sale here. I thought this was really interesting. And they talked about this coincidentally at the conference yesterday. Gen Zers, uh, when it comes to election issues, housing is their number one thought and concern. Not immigration, not you know the economy and all this other stuff. It's housing, which makes sense, right? Because they're the ones that want to buy their first house and cannot due to maybe getting priced out of the market or just a home not for sale, et cetera, et cetera. Rates aren't helping. We know that. But I really just thought this was an interesting graph. So if you want to take a peek at it, more power to you, push pause. Um, I thought this, I don't know how they how they come up with these numbers, but I just wanted to point out that Texas is not on here. So good for us. But these are the states where borrowers can save the most by shopping around for a mortgage. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. This was nuts. Berkshire Hathaway. It's a Warren Buffett's company. The stock, there was a glitch for apparently two hours uh, earlier this week. And the stock price went from $627,000, literally for a share down to 185 bucks. So literally it was a 99.97% discount. It was a glitch. And basically they're saying, yeah, if you bought that, just kidding, you're not rich. Because you could have put in, I think that saw the number like $900 and you'd be you know, $3 million in profit by the end of the day had you bought it that, you know, whatever that 185 looks like. So this is terrifying. There are flying spiders, giant 
venomous flying spiders. Apparently they puff up that little sack on the back and it, they flow through the air, kind of like a hot air balloon. It is, I mean, that is just terrifying. Look at those things, four inch legs, people. This is nuts. Don't like it. It's all up in the East Coast. You guys can keep it up there. That'd be great. Uh, <laughs> this one, there was a document, not a documentary. It was a mockumentary. Uh, it, was a, it was a movie, I think is what you want to call it. But it was like they they did it in documentary format called The Gods Must Be Crazy. It's not good. I don't go back and look, watch it. But it's from the late 90s, I think. I remember watching it as a kid. Well, this is almost like real life. Apparently, some remote Amazon tribe finally got the internet, thanks to Elon Musk. So with all his satellites and everything, they finally got the internet. Well, this remote Amazon tribe uh, basically got hooked on porn and social media. <laughs> so I don't know if you find that funny. I find it hilarious. Uh, I know that's not good and I shouldn't be laughing at it, but damn it, that's funny. Uh, Muhammad Ali's childhood home. So last week we had the uh, Home Alone home. Uh, now this week, apparently Muhammad Ali's childhood home is going for sale for $1.5 million. You even get a little plaque out front. Good for you. And then lastly, for the meme of the week, how it feels when your borrowers get the keys. Yeah, baby. Look at Phil. It's an old picture, but it's classic. All right, team. As always, please share, subscribe, like, forward, all that stuff. Send it to a friend, family member, and let us know if there's anything we can do to help you guys. My team is available, even though I'm still here in Vegas. So uh, viva Las Vegas, everybody. And uh, have a great remainder of your week.